What I have done here is to show you that my government has fought in this fight in corruption, not just in high sounding words, but actually in concrete deeds. We have shunned mere exhortations and showy denunciations of unproved corruption. It has been a holistic approach. We have made institutional reforms, we have enacted additional requisite laws, and we have resourced more adequately the accountability organs of state. Our fight against corruption has been grounded on le legislative, financial, and institutional action, and not on mere lip service. I can assure you that the fight to enhance standards and integrity in public life will continue under the Akufuado government. We will enforce the law no matter who's affected, because it is a necessary foundation for the successful fight against corruption and for guaranteeing integrity in public life. The law must truly be no respecter of persons. Now, friends, I know that in some common law countries, particularly in the United States of America, the political color of judges is a legitimate top, top topic of public discourse. Indeed, justices at the district and state levels within the federal structure of the American government are elected officials. And even though judges at the federal level, including those of the Federal Court of Appeals and the United States Supreme Court, are appointed by the president with the consent of the Senate, their political coloring is generally well known and accepted. Historically, this has not been the case in Ghana, largely because of the critical controlling role of the Judicial Council, a nonpartisan body chaired by the Chief Justice, in the process of judicial appointments. It has meant that judicial appointments are conducted essentially on the basis of professional merit and suitability. Appointments to the lower courts, the High Court, and the Court of Appeal are done by the president exclusively on the advice of the Judicial Council. In the case of appointments to the Supreme Court, because of its unique position in our judicial structure, there are the additional requirements of the consultation of the Council of State and the approval of Parliament. In the overwhelming number of cases of justices designate to the Supreme Court, that approval has been given on a bipartisan basis. You can count on the fingers of a hand the number of justices designate whose approval meant less than unanimous consent. I've gone into this matter in some detail because of a new concept that has been recently introduced into our public discourse by no less a public figure than the fourth president of the Fourth Republic the perennial NDC presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama. <laughs> who has told the world that I have packed the courts with so-called MPP judges, and that one of the key purposes of a putative NDC victory in 2024 will be to enable him balance the courts with so-called NDC judges. Not only are these concepts of, quote, MPP and, quote, NDC judges new in our public discourse, they are also extremely dangerous and represent the most brazen attack on the independence of the judiciary by an allegedly responsible politician of the Fourth Republic. They provide another reason, if more were needed, why right-thinking citizens should ensure the defeat in 2024 of the man whom the first special prosecutor identified as government official number one in the still unresolved airport, airbus, bribery scandal. I'm grateful for the opportunity to contribute my thoughts to this.
I'm grateful for the opportunity to contribute my thoughts to this important conversation and to the deliberations on the theme of this conference. And I wish you a successful meeting in this historic city of Cape Coast, which, ho which housed the Gold Coast Supreme Court in which the first Chief Justice, Marshall C.J., sat. It is appropriate that it should be the venue to welcome to the Bar Conference the latest Chief Justice of our history, the 15th Chief, Chief Justice of Ghana. May God continue to bless the Ghana Bar Association and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.